G'day collectors, Rob here for another episode of Aussie Diecast Reviews. Hope you're all doing well and I hope you're enjoying the show. So for this episode of Aussie Diecast Reviews, I've recently had a request from one of my YouTube subscribers by the name of LJGTRXU128C and they have asked to do a review on exactly that, a, a Holden Toronto GTRXU1. So I've gone through the collection, I've found a car that I think is worth having a look at, so Episode 13, today we're going to go back into the very early 1970s era of Australian motorsport. We'll also be reviewing a Bathurst model, plus we'll be reviewing another Peter Brock model as well. And as always, I'll give my honest review and opinion about the model as well. Uh, so that's what we'll be looking at today. So let's get stuck into it and I'll kick it off and we'll be reviewing this car here. Sweet. Okay, so today we have a 118 Auto Art and Bianti diecast model car. The car is a Holden LC GTR XU1 Tirana. The team is the Holden dealer team and the drivers are Peter Brock and Bob Morris. This model is based off the 1970 Holden dealer team Hardy Ferrodo 500 Bathurst car. This model is not a Bathurst winning model uh, but it is part of the Peter Brock collection that Bianni do as you can see there or is it, it is a part of the Holden dealer team collection or Holden collection. Now the name HDT or Holden Dealer Team and the name Brock for the viewers watching this may or may not know these two names were and still still are a household name here in Australia um, I've explained a little bit about Peter Brock before in previous episodes but um, Peter Brock would make his professional racing career with the Holden Dealer Team in 1969 he was picked up by uh, HDT owner and manager Harry Firth um, and gave Brock his race debut at Bathurst in 1969 and from there a um, very strong alliance and team was born so the Holden dealer team was General Motors Holden semi-official racing team or like a factory team without a big budget um, and the team was run by Harry Fur from 1969 till 1977 uh, then Peter Brock would eventually take over the team uh, HDT uh, but I'll get into that another episode. But I'm uh, getting back to Harry Firth. Uh, Firth saw raw talent in the young 21-year-old Brock. Um, and yeah, a lot of success would come out of it. But for 1970, it would be HDT and Brock's second Bathurst 500. And it would also be the debut of the giant killer, so to speak, the nimble little Holden Tirana XU1. So without further ado, let's have a bit of a look at what this car did. For the 1970 great race, Harry Firth and the Holden dealer team would move away from its Holden V8 powered GDS Monaro and head to Mount Panorama with a new nimble 6 cylinder LC model XU1 Tirana. Concerned at ongoing development of rival Ford V8 powered XW Falcon GDHO, Firth opted to run a much smaller race car compared to the previous Monaro. The LC Tirana XU1 was a match for the larger and more powerful Falcon GDHO at most circuits. But at Bathurst, with its long straights and steep mountain climb, the XU1's power to rate ratio and ability to look after its brakes and tyres were better than the rival Ford teams. And it would hopefully put the XU1 in a race winning position. The Holden dealer team would run three of the XU1s that year. Peter Brock would make his second Bathurst debut with a young Bob Morris, and for qualifying, the car would struggle to find lap speed. The XU1 qualified 6 for the Sunday's great race with a time of 2 minutes 54.8, over 5 seconds slower than pole sitter Alan Moffat. The race would see the Brock and Morris car with engine issues. The pair and the Holden dealer team would end the race finishing 23 laps down on eventful winner Alan Moffat. While the 1970 great race didn't go to plan for Brock and the Holden dealer team, it set a very strong foundation for the Holden dealer team's success on the road ahead. And now let's look at the model. Alrighty, so on to the model. But first we'll go over the box and certificate details. So we'll start off with the box. So with the auto art box you get a nice rendering or a picture of the XU1. And um, as I said before, this is a part of the Peter Brock collection that um, Bianchi do. Um, now this, with Bianchi, it is distributed by... Bianchi, so Auto Art made this car, but yeah, the the actual model is distributed by Bianchi model cars. Um, so yeah, you, that's underneath the car. 
and you've got the side and the back. So yeah, that is the box. Then we'll move on to the certificate. Alrighty, so moving on to the certificate. A um, couple of little things on here. You've actually got the qualifying time that the car did. You got the finishing position and the laps completed. Uh, limited edition of 5004. I have 1668. Uh, no signatures on this certificate. Um, obviously, you're not going to get Peter Brock's signature. Um, but you could get Bob Morris's signature if you wanted to as well. If you saw him at a race meeting. So that is his certificate. Now we'll move on to the model. Alrighty, time for the car reveal and there you go. So the Holden Tirana XU1, uh, well the LC model anyway. As I explained in the pre-video, the Holden dealer team for 1970 opted to move away from its big um, clunky V8 model from 1969. Um, that was the Holden Monaro and decided to run a much, much smaller race car. The LC would run a smaller capacity engine with the 6 litre Holden engine, plus a shorter wheelbase and just overall just a lighter race car. But yeah, I think they were trying to sacrifice engine speed for agility over the big powerful Ford Falcons. Um, the Tirana was a lot quicker on the top of the mountain and coming down the mountain uh, with a whole lot better brake package than the other cars. But um, with a track like Bathurst, you need raw horsepower and the Falcons would just blast past the Toronto on the big long straightaways. So both cars had their disadvantages, but um, ultimately in the end the Falcons were just too strong for the little Holden. Um, but other than that, a very, very cool looking car and uh, model. Alrighty, so starting off with the front of the car. First up. Absolutely beautiful looking model car by Bianti and Auto Art. The way they've replicated this car is up <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, look at it. Um, very, very good job by Auto Art and Bianti. Uh, some of the details on the Tirana. You've got the old, you can see there, the old Holden badge. Um, so that's pretty cool. If I zoom in, see how detailed the writing is. So there, there, look at that, you can actually see Holden on there, and that was the old Holden Lion logo. Uh, it's a lot different different now, but but as you can see, look at the grill, all the finish on the trim of the front of the bar. Um, down the bottom you've got kind of, I think that's the, well, that, I think that's where the radiator is, or that might be just like a winglet. Um, even the race tyres, you've got the grooves in there. Yeah, very styled front nose with the Toronto. It's actually very, very pointed at the um, middle of the the spoiler. So, yeah, absolutely cool looking little car. And again, with these cars, all production production car off the line. So, yeah, I think that covers the front of the car. Now we'll move on to the bonnet and engine details. Alrighty, so looking at the top of the car. Uh, a couple of little things here, you've got the detailed engine pins, um, number 40 that Brock and Morris ran that year. Um, now this C, this is the class number that the cars ran. I think there was A, B and C. I think A was the highest. Alrighty, time to see what's underneath this bonnet. Um, we'll have a look at the engine bay. Let's see if the bonnet will stay up. Pretty sure it will. And there you go. Um, you've actually got engine hinges for this actual bonnet to stay up. It's not just like a latch. There's actual proper proper latch, uh, hinges here for it to stay up. So that's pretty cool. And um, there, there you go. Look at that beautiful looking engine there, Holden LC Tron engine that Auto Art and Biandi have done. So the top speed of the Holden Tirana coming down Conrad Strait was around the 115 mile per hour mark. So yeah, the Holden. GDI XC1 was developed by General Motors Holden along with Harry Firth to compete in the production racing series here in Australia. And remember this, this these cars were production cars. They were driven off the production line. They were put on the racetrack to win races. So it wasn't like today's race cars where you need an X amount of money and sponsors and all that. You know, this car would you would buy and pretty much race. You just put a roll cage in it and yeah. But getting back to the XE1 engine, uh, this little beast would put out around 
160 horsepower or I think it's 119 kilowatts uh, powered by a six cylinder engine uh, it was fitted with three carburetors as you can see there the one two three um, you have the cast iron headers RPM was around the 5000 RPM mark um, and then you've got the radiator or the canisters so yeah for acceleration it wasn't as quick as the Falcons so yeah um, I think I've covered the engine bay now we'll move on to the side of the car alright so looking at the side of the model uh, absolutely spot on with the paintwork and decals for this model um, that Bianti and Auto Art done as you can see you've got all the sponsors there so yeah very very well replicated a um, couple of little details here you've got the GTR XU1 logo um, you've got the three slanted uh, race screws here that the GTR ran Bob Morris and Peter Brock there hold them deal the team logo uh, so one thing about the XU1 was its power to weight ratio um, and its brakes compared to the big Falcons uh, just not the Falcons, there were other cars, I'm pretty sure there were there's the Chargers, there were Valiants and um, Pacers. So yeah, the you know big cars that the Tirana had to contend with and yeah, the XC1 would look after its tyres and brakes a lot better than um, them other cars. You have the detail steel rims here, 13 inch wheels, uh, which again, which were slightly grooved. Um, but other than that, I think that covers the side of the car, so now we'll have a look at the rear. Alrighty, so looking at the rear, and again you've got the GTR XU1 logo. Um, now if you can see at the back of the rear window there, that's all carpet in there. Um, there's a fabric, like, like a bit like carpet, and you've got the roll cage, and then you've got the racing seats strapped into the back there. Um, another little thing here, if I open up this, Will it stay up? Yeah, it'll stay up. You have the spare race tyre in there. Uh, that doesn't come out, that's stationary. And you have the little little um, f uh, fuel sump, I think it was 77 litres. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And obviously that's where the fuel would go into there. That would flip that up, Put the, that's where the fuel would go. Um, very cool looking rear tail lights. Um, other thing here, you've got the license plate number. I'm pretty sure that was for Victoria or New South Wales. Um, these the teams would actually sometimes drive the race cars up from either Victoria or, or interstate New South Wales. Yeah, and all, again, very well replicated uh, paintwork and decals. So yeah, not much with aero with these cars. This the Toronto had a little rear spoiler, but other than that, uh, not a lot of not not a lot of aero. And down the bottom you've got the twin twin mufflers, so yeah, very very cool car. So yeah, this is looking underneath the car very quickly. Uh, the Tirana ran a shorter wheelbase compared to its previous car of the Monaro. Um, so yeah, then you've got all the exhaust system and the gearbox and the suspension. And again with the groove race tyres as well. Um, so that covers underneath the car, now we'll have a look at the interior. Now before I open up the car door, one little detail here is the actual uh, keyhole there for opening up the car and locking the car, so that's pretty cool. Uh, production line handles, uh, no window in this car. And then if I open this up, you can see the window rollers. So the Tirana had a four speed a uh, four-speed gearbox as you can see there all detailed race, uh, steering wheel with the Holden logo you probably can't see it but um, you've got the petrol gauges, the taco meters, detailed steering wheel as I said before uh, and again with the f uh, fabric or the carpet production line uh, carpet that the cars ran uh, you have the and again the racing seat and the racing straps. So the XC1 proved to be not only good on the racetrack but also off the racetrack. Um, it was a very very good rally car here in Australia. I know Brock used it a lot for the Australian Rally Championship in 1970s um, and he won a couple of races and titles so yeah very popular car here in Australia. 
And just to finish up, we're looking at the passenger side door. And you've got the gearbox there. And you've got the emergency handbrake. Um, and again, all the tachometers and fuel gauges and the production line go uh, glove box. So, yeah, very, very cool model. And um, very well done by both model companies. So that covers the detail points about the XU1. So I'll give my honest review now and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, time for my honest review about this model. Um, first up, quality. Now in terms of quality for this model, you are not going to be disappointed. Auto Art and Bianchi have done, a, as I said, an absolutely outstanding job on this car or on this model. Right down to the tooling, the decals, uh, the paint, and overall just accuracy. They're very high standards of quality, so why so? Um, for quality, two thumbs up. Uh, details, again, details in this model are very high. Uh, you get all opening doors, bonnet and uh, boot. And of course, that beautifully detailed engine bay and interior. Um, plus you get the detailed rear of the car with the spare tyres. So, all around a very detailed model car. Um, and again, so for details, it's a two thumbs up. Uh, goods and bads, we'll start with goods. So if you are thinking about getting this model for your collection, as I said, you're not going to be disappointed. The model looks great, it looks unbelievable, so yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it, and it's all good. Bads, very little bads for this model. Um, if any, there's, there's no bads. One thing I would have liked to have seen with this model is a flyer or some sort of, you know, something like that with this model. Seeing that it is a part of the Peter Brock collection, uh, but other than that, there's there's no bads, well, with my model anyway. Uh, moving on the price. Uh, this model was sold at a retail price of, of I think, $175. I, I could be wrong. Um, I brought this car off eBay back in 2012 uh, for a price of $189, uh, not including postage. The car was released back in 2009 or 2010, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so not a, it's not a very old model. Uh, asking price at the moment for this car is going for around uh, the 190 to 200 dollar mark, give or take. Um, but at the moment, I can't see that number rising over the 300 dollar mark for this car. Uh, eBay price you're looking at forking at around 215 dollars plus postage. So I would suggest looking on Facebook or something like that. Uh, or at a swap meet, you'll probably get pay a lot less for this car, but yeah, there's a couple on eBay at the moment. Uh, how rare is the car? Uh, not a real rare one, to be honest, even for a Brock car, anyway. I mean, there is 5,004 units of this car out there, so it's, so it's, yeah, it's not going to be a hard car to find. Um, and the car didn't really achieve much for that year, for 1970 race. But if you are a Brock collector or uh, like a Holden collector, then yes, it is. It's a model that you're going to need in your co uh, collection or cabinet for sure. But for rareness um, or like trying to find it, yeah, it's it's not that not that hard to find, or it's not that rare to be honest. Uh, car to compare it to. Uh, no car to compare it to for today's episode. Uh, Bianchi or, or Auto Art are the only one who uh, who have made this. Uh, livery at the moment for, for the XU1 and I say at the moment because Classic still have a XU1 Tirana model as well but I'm pretty sure that's an LJ not an LC so uh, look it's more likely that Classics may one may one day make this car with a LC tooling maybe also they have a Peter Brock collection so yeah maybe in the near future Classics might release their own version of this car um, but as for today, no car to compare it to. Uh, rating out of 10, um, I'm going to give this model a 10 out of 10 for this car. Uh, Auto Art and Bianchi have done a bloody good job with this car, right down to the smallest details. I mean, if you look at the real race car or a picture of the real model car and compare this, like compare it to this model, it looks exactly like the real thing. So yeah, very good quality, details and all opening parts as I said, just as a die cast model should be. So all in all a very well replicated model car. 
And if you're a passionate collector, I would highly recommend it to you. So that's it for episode 13 today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and again, thank you to all the subscribers. I've actually got up to 70 subscribers now, so I'm very happy with that. Um, and again, if you have any suggestions of what model you want to see me review, please let me know and I'll try and get it done for you. And also, I'll give you a shout out as well on the channel. So, yeah, so please like, share and comment and all that good stuff. Um, and that's it for today, guys. And I'll catch you around next time for another episode of Aussie Diecast Review. So, catch ya.